And today we're going to take a look at shoebox steering box. This is from a 4950 Ford. Uh, it's a nice day outside, so we decided to work outside, which means we've got planes, trains, automobiles, and chainsaws, lots of ambiance. This is the steering box that's obviously out of the car. Normally there'd be a shaft about six feet long sticking out of here, but someone in their infinite wisdom decided to saw the shaft off to make it easier to get the steering box out of the car. So we've just taken and welded a bolt in the center of the shaft for demonstration purposes. The first thing you're going to have to do is take this large nut off the bottom to get your pitman arm off. It's an inch and seven sixteenths. Then you're going to need a puller that'll hook on here, screw into the center, pull this arm off. We turn this shaft. You can see how the steering works. Essentially, you turn this shaft, rotates the output shaft, turns the pitman arm, and turns the wheels. When you pull this out of the car, you're going to have to unclamp the outer housing from this cap and this is going to come out with the box. So there are four screws to hold this cap on. This box has already been apart so make it easier for the make the video. So we'll take these screws out. I'm going to mark this cap so that you know how it came off. Put a little center punch mark, center punch mark. Now you can slide this collar back up and off the shaft if you want. You're going to find underneath there there's going to be a gasket or a shim. And those shims are varying thicknesses from two thousandths up to twenty thousandths. And what that does is put preload on this bearing for the worm gear. and you're going to have to set that so that you get the proper amount of preload on the bearing. If you don't have any shims in there and you clamp that down, it's going to be too much preload on your bearing. It's going to cause premature wear and make it hard to turn the steering. So once you get ready to put it back together, you're going to have to figure out how to check that preload, get it the way you want it by putting the appropriate shim pack back in there. When you take this apart, make sure you get uh, an X-Acto knife or a razor blade and carefully get that gasket or shim off of there and then tie wrap it to the housing the way it came off and then you can take that off the shaft and out of the car. Then you're going to have four bolts on the bottom of the sector housing that hold the sector housing to the steering gear case. These holes are slotted the reason they're slotted is this is like an eccentric. You rotate that around when you're putting it back together and that's going to set your preload between your worm and sector gears. Again, you want to mark this so you know how you took it apart. Put some center punch marks here and here, however you want to mark it. If you put paint on it, remember when you clean the gearbox up, you'd allow it to clean the paint off. So center punch marks are a little more effective. Then you can pull this sector housing out. It may take a little persuasion. You can pull that out of the gearbox. And now you see that you have the sector gear and you have a gasket here. You put that aside for the time being. There's not much else in this gearbox. Normally there's a cap in here. This is back the other way around. This normally goes up through the worm gear shaft and this cover taps in there to seal off the bottom of the gearbox. If you knock this out, you should replace it with a new one because that's what seals up the bottom of your steering box. But this is designed so that the wire from the horn runs down through the center of the steering column and out the bottom so you can hook it up. Inside here you're going to see the uh, bottom race for the worm and that tapered roller bearing. Here you have 
the upper race and roller bearing. I said we've welded this bolt in the center of the shaft just for demonstration purposes. This screw screws in and out and sets the uh, end play for the sector shaft. But you can see here how the worm works. Just rotates all the way right, all the way left, and makes your steering work. Once you get to this point, you take the shaft and pull this whole assembly up out of the housing so that you end up with bottom bearing, worm gear. Keep in mind you're going to have this giant long shaft here. The upper race, upper bearing, and that's the inside of your gearbox. Now you can press this gear off the shaft and replace it with a new one. If you look closely here, in this piece, this gear is heavily pitted, really is, is worn out. The bearing surfaces are heavily pitted and worn out, so this really needs replaced. Clean that all up, put it aside, tap all your holes, and you can move to the sector housing. You can pull this sector shaft out. A couple of shim washers here. Inside the sector housing you're going to have needle bearing top and bottom and a seal. There'll be a spacer in between the needle bearing, uh, the two needle bearings. You can press all that stuff out and clean it. Replace it with new stuff. This is your sector gear and just like the worm gear you can see that this gear tooth is heavily pitted and heavily worn. Now you can replace that gear, you have to press the pin out and uh, put a new gear in there. And that's really all that makes up, we have an airplane, the 49 Ford 1950 Ford shoebox steering gear. If you're going to reassemble it with some new parts, you're going to put this lower race in. You're going to make sure that this tube is in there properly with a new one. Seal that up. Put your bearing on the bottom of that. Feed it in. And take your upper bearing. bearing race, set that down in there, I have to give it a little persuasion to get it lined up perfectly, just a snug fit, and you're going to replace your cap, We'll put a couple of screws in there. Now, you can see how that works. And that, right now, there's no shim in there. Snug that up. That gear shaft will still turn, but there's a fair amount of drag on that, which means that there's too much preload on the bearing. Now, it doesn't take much to loosen that up, and as an example, What we're going to do is we have some 7 thousandths feeler gauges. We're going to just stick them in there. It's 
snug the bolts back up. And now you can see just with seven thousandths that that gear turns quite a bit easier. Keep in mind when it's all done, you've got to rotate the other shaft. That's why it's important to find the proper amount of shim to put under that cap and put preload on that bearing. Take our sector shaft, put it back in the housing. All right, we're going to take our sector shaft and housing, set them back in, line up our marks, the bolts back in, keeping in mind that this housing is slotted and will rotate one way or the other, and that changes the preload or the mesh of the gears. There you have your steering functioning again, hopefully with all new bearings, all new parts, fresh oil, always put oil in the steering box, not grease. In the end you have three different adjustments that you can make to the steering box once you put it back together. This adjustment We'll set the preload on the sector shaft. Just run that screw in until it barely touches. Back it out ever so slightly so you don't have any end play in the shaft. Tighten the lock nut. Don't forget to do that. You have shims that go here to set the preload on the worm gear. And finally, you have these eccentric adjustment on the bottom that sets the preload is when the gears, the worm and sector gear mesh. The best thing to do is to get yourself the shop manual and look to see what those specifications are that you're looking for and uh, get the whole thing set up properly. In a nutshell, that's a shoebox steering box. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. All the parts are available. Um, the um, sector gear here you can buy the whole shaft with the gear already on it, or you can just buy the gear, press it off your old shaft, press the new one on, or you can just send your gearbox in and have somebody else rebuild it for you. Your choice. But uh, that's it, and that's it for today.